we are definitely taking it up. We were third respondent uh, in this case uh, with the Hani family as well. And we, but the first and second respondent were the Correctional Services and the Minister of Justice. And we want to encourage them to take it further. We will also uh, uh, pull our weight into this thing so that it is taken to the next level. We believe that a different co a, a, a judge will come to a different ruling. Or actually we are prepared to take it to the highest court in the land so that a full bench, even of the Constitutional Court, can actually listen to this particular case. It is a travesty of justice. It is lucubrious that a month before we commemorate the assassination of one of the great leaders of our movement. He is released on parole. Our view is that on his release, he must be deported to the country of his origin and never come back to South Africa again. Because we think that it is insensitive to the devastation caused by the murder of Christian, not only to the ANC and the Communist Party, but to the Hani family. In two weeks' time, he's going to join a South Africa that he sought to collapse by killing Chris Hahn. Now, this release of Jonas Walus must bring to the center the question of whether Chris Hani's death was in vain. South Africa uh, is a constitutional democracy. We have laws in this country, and we say that if you comply to the rules, then you must get your parole. And it is a pity that he had to go to court to force the minister to get his parole. There are processes that need to be followed. Uh, in our understanding of this is that the processes have been followed, uh, that um, there has been an application made, that the court has now um, ordered that parole be granted, uh, and our view is that under the circumstances, uh, Mr. Walush uh, must now be released on parole.